Good evening guys, my name is Tommy and welcome to Northern Ear Reactions. How are you? I hope you're all okay. Tonight guys we are listening to some metal again. Um, we are going to be listening to a band called Halloween and the song that we're going to be listening to is called Keeper of the Seven Keys. Now I think I've only ever heard Halloween once and that was on the Halloween live stream. Um, I think the song was Halloween, Halloween. Um, and I really enjoyed listening to the song back then. They gave me um, real Iron Maiden vibes, especially the vocals. Um, from what I remember, there was two vocalists. Um, I think the, the version that I saw of Halloween was some kind of special reunion version. And people were saying that both vocalists came together for that one. Something in the back of my head tells me that they haven't really got two vocalists. It was just that special occasion. But both of them were great vocalists, and I really enjoyed the sound. It's been too long. Like I said, it was October 31st when I last listened to them. It's now 2nd of April, so what's that? Six months? Um, You know, let's go back and listen to them. This is Keeper of the Seven Keys, Halloween. Let's just uh, get the headphones on and uh, make sure that you can see what you need to see. And um, I'll see you in a little while. Let's go. Make the people hold each other's hands and fill their hearts with truth. You made up your mind, so do. Stay well on your way and follow the 
So subtle. Okay, bass. Disease, 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 my friend, for this whole world's in devil's hand. Disease, 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 my friend, for the key or you may die. Disease, 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 my friend, for this whole world in devil's hand. Disease, 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 my friend, for the key or you may die. This is my kind of solo.
Harmonies again. How do two guitars stay this tight? Epic. 
that was a real story, wasn't it? I'm really disappointed though. Not with not with the song. I wrote a song. I've been working on a song for the past couple of weeks. And I think the chord sequence that I've used is exactly the same chord sequence as what he uses in the acoustic bit at the start and at the end. Not with the make, not with the little runs that he does, like to link the the two phrases together, but just the chord sequence on its own and it's finger picked. It sounds very very similar. So now everyone's just going to think I've copied this song. Oh, I might have to go back to the drawing board. Okay. That was a really, really, like I said, epic story. Um, his voice, his voice is incredible. The range, the power. Like, I, I don't know how he does it. And, you know, I know that I've said in the past that Bruce Dickinson is a great singer and there's been quite a lot of really great powerful singers but he reminded me more of Jeff Tate in Take Hold of the Flame that very first Queensryche song that I heard he, he reminded more of that sound um, and I don't know whether that was again just because on the odd occasion I just felt he went into that higher range a little bit too much but I was thinking to myself during the song why did this performance feel more comfortable to me or feel more acceptable to me than the Take Hold of the Flame performance that I heard all those months ago. You know, when I heard that, which was very similar in style, I don't mean they sounded similar just before you all jump on me, but that kind of forever going into the higher ranges, long, high, powerful notes, kind of showing off your range in the nicest way possible. At the time I said, didn't like it it was too much a uh, great voice but it was too much you didn't need to do it all that time but i listened to it here and it was yes the same the same thoughts went through my head but i didn't feel as uncomfortable about it maybe not uncomfortable i think that's the wrong word but you know what i'm trying to say there was lots and lots of change-ups lots of change-ups there and some of them were fantastic some of them, though, I don't know why they did the whole shift over to the three, four time signature for uh, the, like the pre-chorus. I don't know whether that, that it's because the three, four time signature gives it that kind of sea shanty feel, and maybe that's just tying in with the with the um, with the title a little bit. Um, but I just felt it was very different from the other chord sequences, um, but. In that bit, when they do change to 3-4, I did mention before that it's quite subtle. They make a change. There's kind of like two changes at that point. And I can't put my finger on what is changing because I still think they're both in 3-4. So, drummers. Is it the drummer that's doing it? Let me know. Other than that, I thought it was great. The chorus was great. It had a real kind of light as out, epic kind of sound to it. Again, his vocals, lyrics, sounded like it was about a, a guy basically defeating the devil or, or Lucifer, which makes me think is there religious connotations in here, the fact that he's been referred to as Lucifer. But it's basically about a guy that defeats him. Um, it kind of had the kind of seven deadly sins vibe about it. He, he's, he's overcoming these different... Um, negatives within the world uh, using the metaphor of dropping the keys into the sea and each one gets rid of those problems and the last one um, I don't think the song actually describes what that last C represents but it sounds like the devil is there saying don't throw it don't throw it in if you do it uh, I, I can't remember what he says but he says bad things will happen but then the other side of his shoulder if you like the angel on his shoulder is saying no throw it and he does he throws it and the song talks about the devil being swallowed up by the earth and you have this epic solo to finish off the song there was quite a few things that i really really loved i loved the different solos um not every c had the solo but two or three of the c's had different solos 
and um, I know the video said Mike and Kai were doing the solo, but you know you could definitely tell without that that there was two guitars going on. One was on the left, one was quite clearly on the right. What I quite liked was that the drummer changed up for his playing for each solo, just to give you an indication that something different is happening. Then they both came together, the panning became centralised, and they both played together with some really great, tight, fast harmonies. You had that really nice, slow solo that almost reminded me of like a Pink Floyd-esque solo. And I said that's the kind of solo for me where notes have been picked in a very specific way and played in a very specific way to give as much effect as possible to the song. Really, really enjoyed that. And then we come full circle and finish up on that acoustic riff again, that acoustic chord sequence, the finger picking towards the end, just to kind of bring everything to a nice close. Let me know what else is good to listen to by Halloween. Or what other bands have a vocalist similar to that kind of style? You know, we've had Halloween, we've had Bruce Dickinson, we've had Jeff Tate with Queensryche. Who else fits that kind of bill? The ability to sing powerfully in the lower range, but then the ability to, what feels like, effortlessly jump right into the top of the ranges but yet still maintain that power, that control, that quality in the voice. Let me know. That was Halloween, Keeper of the Seven Keys. I really hope you've liked the reaction. If you have, then take a look around the channel. And if you like what you see, then consider subscribing. Make sure you click the like button as well. Let's get YouTube knowing that you guys enjoyed the video so that it pushes it out to more and more people. And I'll be back again tomorrow, guys, for some more reactions. Until then... Have a good night, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Take care.